Look at this inside there. Okay, the reason why I'm sharing with you this is because I ended up buying this random skin cream earlier for $100 and I wasn't wanting it. It wasn't something I was looking to buy whilst shopping. I was persuaded to buy it. And the reason why I actually bought this is because I wanted to reward this salesperson for her efforts because she was following the five steps that is powerful when it comes to persuasion. These are the secret strategies that you can try out. So what I'm gonna be sharing with you today is in regards to the steps that she took to be able to persuade me to purchase as well as other customers that she had lining up to basically buy this because she was cold approaching all of these customers, by the way, and she was able to close these deals. So be sure to pay close attention in regards to what she did because you can try this out so you're able to influence more people. So how this happened was earlier. I was in one of the biggest shopping centers here in London called Westfields. It's in one of the biggest shopping centers here in London and it's early morning when nobody's shopping so it's beautiful. Introverts dream come true. <laughs> well extrovert likes it busy. Do you like it busy? Nah. No? Okay. Well, welcome to the club, Tom. <laughs> it's massive, right? Just to walk from one end to the other of the uh, shopping center, other end of shopping center, it takes like, like 15, 20 minutes. It's massive, right? So I was walking around looking at all of these different stores and noticed that there was a skincare booth right in the middle of all of the shops. And corner of my eye, I could notice a girl looking at me. And she's one of those girl salespeople that you may have seen before who gives out the free samples. So the first strategy that she used was something that's called a pattern interrupt. Notice that every single day, you are in a habituated thinking called a trance. So you are in a hypnotic state every single day. And the reason why it's important for you to understand this is because if you want to get somebody's attention, you've got to be able to interrupt their pattern. And this is why you may have been in a party before, a networking party, and all of a sudden, amongst all of the noise, you may have heard somebody saying your name, corner the room, and just wakes you up. Right now you're out of the trance. So that's called a pattern interrupt. And every single day you're in this trance and that's why you've got into your car before or jumped on a vehicle before, got to your destination, that could be a grocery store, and you can't really remember the journey. So marketers, marketers and advertisers understand this. They understand they gotta be able to wake up the consumer so they're more likely to listen to their influence message. So what she did was she's interrupted my pattern. The way she did this, was when I looked back at the person who was looking at me, I noticed she was giving me this smile, almost like you would give to somebody that you know. It was almost like a friend smile. So instantly it gave me that, that feeling, like do I know this person? And the next thing she did was called uh, conditioning compliance. And what conditioning compliance is, is when somebody plays upon the conditioning compliance that we have as human beings through our upbringing, as well as the conditioning of our country as well as in general, what's accepted in the society. For example, if somebody was to throw a ball at you, you naturally, you look to catch it. If somebody wants to maybe high five you, you wanna naturally put your hand up so you can return the high five. If somebody wanna shake your hands, they go like this and you will naturally wanna shake their hands as well. This is called conditioning compliance. So what she did was she put her hand out like this to give me something. Naturally, my hand opened. And I was conscious while she was doing this because I analyze a lot of salespeople and I advise a lot of salespeople nowadays. So I was conscious, I put my hand out and she said, I've got a gift for you. And now she's playing upon a principle called reciprocation. And what reciprocation is, is whenever we're given something, we're more likely to follow through with the next request because we feel like we're in debt in terms of emotional debt that we want to return the favor. So the next thing she did was something called commitment and consistency. You see, if you ask somebody to do a large request, they're likely to say no. And that's why you wanna chunk it very, very small. I do this on a stage all the time. If I want the crowd to stand up, I don't say to everybody, stand up. We say something on the lines of, put your hands up, by the way. Put your hands up if this sounds like you. So small request. And then we say, higher, higher, put your hands up higher. And then I say, hand, ha stand up if you got your hands up. Now everybody begins to stand up. This is called commitment and consistency. That's why she's given me this gift. Now I've taken it and now I'm gonna reciprocate. And this is why she says, hey, can I show you how amazing this gift is? And I say, sure. And she says, okay, let me sit, uh, sit you over here. And she took me over to a skincare booth and she got me to put my hands out like this where she began to test out this product. 
So now she's following through on the commitment consistency. So whilst I'm sat down, she was stood up and she was testing this product and showing me how good it was. And during this sales process, she was playing upon a principle called liking. And the reason being is the more we like somebody, the more we're likely to follow through with whatever their message or sales strategy is. If you don't like somebody, you don't tend to listen to them. Now this may sound very simple, but it's not very easy to master. Because to master liking charisma, it does require a lot of different influence strategies we can't, which I can't go into detail today because I could be here for many, many hours. But if you want me to maybe create more videos in terms of charisma and so forth, do let me know in the comments box below. So what she was sharing was stories and she was finding different hook points and she managed to find the hook point where I began to resonate with her and she could see it. And so she began to amplify into that area and that's how she created rapport with me. So once she created rapport, she knew that I'll be sitting there for quite a while listening to her sales message. Now, at this point, I was just like, yeah, she knows what she's doing, so I was ready to buy anyways. But I was curious to know, how would she handle an objection from me? Because this is something I love to do nowadays, walk into different stores and see how different salespeople handle objections. So I began to share with her once she revealed the price of this skincare product, which was $150 retail. Um, she basically said, yep, this is how much it costs and so forth. And I said to her immediately, oh, it's too expensive. So I began to just say, yeah, it's not for me. And I wanted to see what would she say next? And she said, well, we've got a special promotion today. And I was just like, here we go. <laughs> and she began to share how for the next 24 hours only, right? Bit cliche, right? Uh, but I f forgave her for that one because I was kind of expecting something like this, but she dropped it from 150 to $125. But the next thing she did was very smart, which I kind of admired. She did something that's called a heart drop, which is a double drop. Double drops is not something that you tend to expect because as consumers, we're very used to the one drop. So what she did was she dropped it to $125 and this is a process called price anchoring. You show a higher price and this is what, what we're now focused on and then we drop the price. Okay, now it seems cheaper. Steve Jobs was very famous for doing this back in the days when he was launching the iPhone. Now, the next thing she did once she did the $125 drop was that I thought that was it. Okay, so I was like, okay, that's still pretty cool. I was ready to buy because I was just like kudos for her effort, right? So I wanted to give her commission, that sort of thing. But then she began to do the next thing because at $125, I still objection handled her to see how does she handle it. And what she did was she began to push away, which was like, wow, that's smart, I like that. So what she was doing is a principle where consumers feel like they're the ones in control, okay? And they expect the salespeople to almost be needy. But what she showed was she had positioning and so she was sh sharing how, if I'm not willing to take it for $125 after she's just done a drop, she said, maybe it's not for me. And so she began to push away and saying, do you want just my business card and maybe we can just go from there? And that's what kept me in the game even longer. Why? Because as human beings, we want what we can't have. And we always chase what's running away from us. The biggest brands out there, the luxury brands, they know how to master this and they've mastered it. And this is why Chanel, they did a big launch uh, many, many months ago. And th there were so many people queuing up outside Chanel's to spend thousands of dollars on a handbag. And this is just, again, playing upon the same principle. We always want what we can't have. And so because she did that, I was just like, oh, that makes me want it more. But then the next thing was unexpected. She did another price anchor drop. She dropped it from $125 to around $100. And she said, oh, this is going to be only for you. And this is my staff discount. This is how much I get it for. And I wanna basically give it to you for this price because of, uh, I can't remember exactly what reason it was, because I was dressed nice or something like that. It was a random reason. But anyways, it was a great drop. And it was an unexpected drop. Immediately, back in my mind, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna let her go now because I'm sure she's got more customers she wants to approach. And I was, I was thinking, wow, that was a great job. So I said to her, you're really good at selling. And I said, I wanna reward you. And so I ended up buying this random skincare product. I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna use it. Maybe I'll try it out, who knows. <laughs> Anyways, she used these five principles to persuade me. And there were other things that she was using to be able to influence other people because I was watching what she was doing. If you want me to go in more detail inside it, I know so many different strategies. I've been in the field of marketing for over a decade now. Be sure to let me know in the comments box below. And I've got a challenge for you. 
when you're out next in a sales uh, situation such as walking to different shops don't close yourself off when a salesperson says can i help you say yes please help me right you know being on a busy high street or i should say oxford street it reminds me there's so much money flowing everywhere <laughs> abundance millions being spent around me right now remember you just got to know how you can get some of that flowing to you and notice what strategies they're using because realize this you cannot master something that you're subconsciously avoiding yourself and every single entrepreneur knows how to sell and persuade people so don't close yourself off so don't call it sleazy don't call it scammy or whatever it may be selling is a must if you want to make yourself more successful so go out there inside it and go analyze the world in the life's classroom and as always follow your heart my friend and take action and go live the life you're truly born to live i'll see you on the next video soon take care so five years ago i used to work here and this is where i met Toma. She was my supervisor on this escalator. That's how we met. Oh my god. Reminiscing. It was uh, this very store behind me here. Louis Vuitton, baby. Louis Vuitton. LV. LV. <laughs> Here's one bad habit you gotta stop doing. Scarcity mindset. I remember when I was broke, you used to always tell myself, I can't afford something, I can't do that, I can't do that. Tell yourself today I can, and I'll find a way, and uh, I'll make it happen.